All right, we have a couple things to go over today. Today is a architecture heavy recording. Architecture is heavy. So heavy. <laughs> What's the first thing we're going to talk about? We are going to talk about architecture. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, what are we talking about? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I've seen over the past few days a couple teenagers asking online on different platforms, you know, is architecture worth mm. studying? Or, and, you know, like I'm thinking of being an architect, should I? Or what should I know before being an architect? And and I, I kind of wish that, you know, um, uh, more kids of that age were already questioning what they were thinking of doing later in life. I think it's a good question. Yeah. And it's a big one. Um, so I think we should talk about that today. Yeah. And what prompted this was that on a, a number of the forums, like you said, there seems to be quite a few posts about this question. Um, so the one that we're going to reference specifically, there's two, in fact, but the first one is titled, Is Architecture Worth It? Worth it? And it's from an Archinect forum thread. Um, um, so the post goes, hi, I'm a very young person, 15. I mean, it's young, but it's not no, eight. Right? Uh, <laughs> Critical <who is> <laughs> already of this person. <laughs> who <laughs> aspires to become an architect. I practice mm. my ideas with via doodles, drawings, observing, Minecraft. Don't judge me. I guess that's a video game. Mm. SketchUp and inspiration from places such as my own area, major cities, and sometimes internationally, uh, such as SK, which I assume is South Korea, England, Japan, etc. But I've been reading some of the pros and cons of architecture, and it's making my possible decision debatable. I've seen a lot of more cons recently than pros, and I would like to hear from people who are A, in university or college right now, and how their experiences are, B, in the profession already, or C, have gone internationally and been in different firms around the world. Also, for what classes I should do before college, in junior and senior year, to prepare for the worst and best. I'm already going to attempt to get more experience in the summer by taking architecture camps that universities offer around the US when able, do visual arts and designs at school, and plan to double up in math to get trig and pre-calc done side by side since math isn't hard. Bragging. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so you don't really need to be good at math, so calm down. Uh, thanks for reading, and I hope you have seen some, you have some feedbacks for possible future architects. Uh, so I think this is an interesting post, and there's been several several others online, and I think it's it's interesting because it 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 forces us to address a number of issues. Uh, one of them is the the ideas that the general public has about architecture, which is usually incorrect, and also since we're talking to you know 15 or 16 year olds who are sophomores ish in high school, that's a different demographic than we're probably used to talking with too. Um, it's interesting because yeah. he says that uh, basically recently he's been seeing a lot of cons. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure if he's been hanging out on Archinect or the architecture platform where architects are expressing themselves, it's probably going to be more cons, right? Because, you know, there is a, there's a lot of stuff you can complain about in the field. And if well, you look so, outside of those architecture-focused platform, it might be a lot of pros because people are not in that profession. So I think it's a, it's hard to for someone who doesn't know what architecture is about to get a true feeling for mm. what it is, right? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's he's doing the right thing already by reaching out. Um, but the first response is. Yo, Cray, Cray is the name of the first uh, post, the 15-year-old. Don't want to crush your dreams, kid, but choose a different career path that pays money. And it goes on for a paragraph. I regret becoming an architect, and to be honest with you, my wife makes double what I make with a freaking associate's degree, exclamation mark. Then he goes on to explain him about himself and whatever. So most of the neg negative comments you, you will hear, and now we're speaking to the 15-year-olds, um, will have to do with pay. Uh, that's probably like 90% of the, uh, of the negative comments and hours and pay and hours and how hard you have to work. And it's totally correct that, um, th uh, I mean, because of inflation, the amount of money you make per year will go up. But when a lot of our friends graduated in 2010 ish, let's say, which is also just a few years after the big, uh, 
uh, economic crash. Um, people, well, at that time, basically, you were lucky if you got any kind of paid gig, even if it was a, 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 an internship with a monthly stipend, you were still considered kind of lucky um, because a lot of the offices were just trying to hang, hang on to the people they have and trying to not fire people. So the idea of paying some fresh person more money um, you know, was difficult. Um, so that said, at that time, though, if you did get a full-time job, not, job, not an internship, you were probably going to make around 40 something thousand dollars a year somewhere between 35 and 45 if you're fresh out of undergraduate school seemed seemed to be uh, around the average if you had just graduated again again at around 2010 wait wait back then yeah oh, i don't know about 45 that. would be high right yeah that's why i said 35 to 45 which is a big range but somewhere i mean i don't there. i don't know uh you know if if people are still getting internships when they come out after they graduate yeah. as their first job but that's kind of you know that's what our, we got, right? that, that's happening and hopefully it's going to change um but anyway so i hate to use specific numbers because it's it depends because on the areas. it depends on a lot of things but you know just for some kind of reference that's the amount and that was in new york city where you could guess that the annual wages are a bit higher because it's expensive to live there. But so if you're talking about thirty-five dollars to $45,000 a year after five years of school, um, that's not a lot of money and that's not enough really to live on, uh, uh, typically we would say, especially in a place like New York City. I mean, you can do it, but if you have student loans, then it's not really feasible. Um, but so that's the kind of money that we're talking about. And of course, compared to many other professions for that, that take four years to, to complete, that's like half or a third of the amount so yes the pay is generally pretty shitty um and typically the working hours are not eight to five or nine to six they're probably more like nine to nine i was, I was around the average maybe right yeah it um, depends on the firm you're working for. depends on the firm but it's 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 very common in this field for people to be working 12 14 15 18 hour days or on the extreme, obviously, 24-hour days um, consistently. And you just avoid those places if you don't want to do that, but it is also much more common in this profession than in any other, and many other professions. And it's very common to not get paid for the overtime you're working. Yeah, there's no overtime. The, uh, uh, I, I mean, very corporate firms or like big ones or maybe small ones that have a, a good you know, approach to the profession, would but it's really not typical a very very select few I, I only know of like two firms that do overtime legitimately and even them even then it's not time and a half it's just time um and uh, so this is like the the less interesting things perhaps but uh still important so there's one of salary and then the benefits are usually pretty shitty <laughs> as you would expect compared to other kinds of places or professions maybe um i'm trying to think of other cons of being an architecture i i think Another big one, which is has less to do with uh, quantifiable things, but more with qualitative things, is that it. Um, I think if you if you if you feel like you are going to be or you are a really creative person and you like thinking on your own, and you're, I don't know if I'd use the word artist because that's kind of charged, but you're more in that that end of the spectrum. Um, that's great for architecture, but there are also a lot of firms out there that you you will probably feel stifled uh, when you're in there because the the reality of designing a building and getting the drawings done and not overseeing but but making sure it gets built correctly and working with construction managers and things like this and engineers um, it's a it's like a big puzzle a really really complicated and complex puzzle and all of that can weigh down on the creative uh, creative side of things and so i think a lot of architects uh, who are in undergraduate school uh, produce more artistically uh, a creative types of projects let's say and they they're able to express that side of them and once they get out they uh quote unquote realize that that's not how it typically works and they feel like they are are not able to satisfy that side of them well and that's the actually one of the um biggest complaint or problem with the profession of architecture now is that there is a huge gap between what you learn in school mm -hmm. 
and the transition you have to do once you go to work for a firm it's it's not really what you are prepared for yeah so if you're 15 year old and you go you know to architecture school and see what students are doing it's all great but it's definitely like he's asking you know good to reach out to people who are currently working yeah and and kind of understand that those those two aspects of of the profession are slightly different and um i think those are the two biggest cons the other one is that if you if you have your own firm it's a real real struggle to get clients to pay you um uh, Pay, pay period pay you period but also pay you a, a decent or good amount of money to live on it's just a tough profession because in the united states it's it's generally not as um revered or respected as other professions and i think the title architect is maybe has more weight um to it in in european countries i, I feel like um and and so obviously that that's similar to to the the first thing i mentioned which is how much you get paid as employee but if you th think about it from the perspective of having your own office it's still a problem right and and of course the amount of money that employees get paid get paid is directly related to um how much the firm is getting paid which is what i'm talking about here so I, i'm trying to think i don't know if there's any other really big cons to to it right um, those are the biggest no, ones. No, I mean, those are really the, the biggest thing. And the other thing is that, you know, if before you m might get to work on the project that you've dreamed to work on, mm. it might, things take a while. Oh, that's another it one, It takes yeah. a while, and, and that goes back to the gap between what you learn in school versus when you need to know the real world to get shit built, right? Is that it's all a matter of experience and how much stuff you get exposed to and how much you're learning from your older peers and you know the different types of projects you have to do you kind of you're kind of learning by doing projects so yeah it takes that, a long that time. could that could really expand your 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 exposure and and how much you can learn and also limit it in a way so. yeah yeah um Okay, so I think that's depressing enough. I think we should move on to the the pros, um, which there are many, specifically with uh, being an architect, period, but also just going through architectural school. Um, I think, again, I would reemphasize that there's a big difference between uh, going and setting something in school uh, versus saying that, versus saying, because I studied this in school, now I have to do this the rest of my life. Um, like in the previous, one of the previous recordings, we were talking about which undergraduate, undergraduate architecture schools you should go to. And I was always advocating for going to a university where you get exposed to a bunch of different things. So I think it is valid to say that the architectural education is very valuable, even if you don't end up being an architect. And this is a theme that we've seen amongst uh, friends, colleagues, and friends of friends, and et cetera, that people who become have that education are able to pivot to other creative fields quite nicely. And it's because the, generally speaking, the education you get to become an architect is rigorous, um, and it forces you to think in a very uh, critical and open-minded way. And these things serve you well in any, well, really any profession, but let's say more specifically ones that are, uh, you're still dealing with uh, creative thinking, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's almost I wish like everybody on earth would go through architecture training, <laughs> but not necessarily become an architect because mm -hmm. really everything you would look or do, you would approach it in a completely different way than if you never got that training. Yeah. I think there is something very beneficial to it. And, you know, if you're, like you said, you have the flexibility after your degree to end up doing all kinds of different creative things if you want, or even non creative things, but you have that mindset that you, you trend yourself with, you know. And, and the reason why, to summarize the education, the, re the reason why it's so helpful is that because through school, you are constantly confronted with these different challenges. Um, one is learning a new language of graphics, right? A new language of physical model making, a new language of uh, presentation skills. Skills. Um, you can you can think about you can think of architecture as a kind of language, right? The challenge with it is that we don't have a set alphabet in a way. We don't have a a through z. We don't have numbers to deal with or formulas. It's everything is kind of up for you up up for you to define. 
And so you're always faced with with questions, always questions, question, 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 and it's it's exhausting and tiring. But because you're faced with these different questions from all these different angles, it it's a boot camp really to get your mind prepared for thinking really, really critically that I don't think you get in other fields because other fields, again, have set determined rules. Like we know two plus two is four and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In architecture, you spend a lot of time thinking about what two is in architecture, what your alphabet is. And so you're always, de you're deconstructing everything you've ever seen around you to its very core every semester or every quarter. And if you don't, uh, well, you don't do well in the class and you get critiqued pretty harshly. And even if you do do it successfully, you still get critiqued harshly because there's another way to look at it. There's always another way to look at things. And I think after five years or even four years of, of doing this, it really builds the mind in a different way than, um, than if you don't go through a program like that. You know, it, it, it is a boot camp. So would you agree? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think the I think studying architecture is a fantastic thing to do, even if you're remotely interested in it. And I think it's, it'll serve you well, um, even if you don't don't decide to become an architect afterwards. Um, I think it's great that is he is already thinking about it and, you know, trying to establish things that he he could do before even getting into architecture school. Um, you know, yeah. I, I don't really know how application works. Uh, you know, if it's sort of based on your your, your GPA or or whatever it is. Um, but I'm sure it's it's my my approach to school and architecture school throughout and before was always try to be a step ahead of the game. In what way? Like the classes just, you just just do more than what is being asked to you right oh right um and i think that that applies to the process of applying to schools right you shouldn't wait to get into architecture school to start looking and studying and doing things to get into it so i think it's a very smart move yeah um yeah he's saying that he's going to attend some summer camps to find out a bit more about architecture school um and i think this is a really really good idea um this is what i did and it was what convinced me that it, it was a, a good move. I didn't know for sure that it was going to, you know, go on after school, but it was enough to tell me, like, this is definitely something I want to yeah. do. Namely, the, the program I went to was at the University of Southern California. And uh, we just spent, I forget how long the program was, like two to four weeks or two to four weeks or something like that. You used to spend four weeks making stuff out of cardboard and sitting around and talking about it and then remaking it. And I thought, well, if this is what school is going to be for the next five years, then sign me the fuck up because this is great. Um, and I, I think there is a big difference. I think a lot of people think that you have to be really good at math to be good at architecture or... Um, Hmm. So I think this conversation can go one of two ways. I think you could talk about it f from the general public and maybe the, the older population, what they think, or and from the pr 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 perspective of a high school student, uh, the question is, what classes do I take to become more prepared for architecture school, either to get into architecture school or to succeed there or to start uh, with a head start during freshman year? Um, and... Uh, the hardcore mathematics that uh, students have to learn now in high school, this is getting to like advanced calculus, AP calc, or uh, trigonometry, or statistics. Um, what else do they teach? Well, those are the ones that I remember from my high school experience. Uh, you don't need any of that. Like, you, you never use, you never, you never ever use any of that stuff uh, in architecture really um there are exceptions of course because the field is really broad you could become the point the one percent of architects who use mathematics heavily and kind of uh, fuse the world of math and architecture that's for sure the case but i'm just talking generally right kind of mainstream um you don't really need that stuff but um it is a good i do recommend taking them if you know that you're gonna have to take it in college. So if you have the option to take the advanced placement courses in high school to get college credits, then I would definitely do that because you want to use your college credits for more interesting things and not be taking like So that frees up, frees up like the number of classes you can take, right? You take that in high school, then you can take like 
I don't know, photography class or sculpture or like woodworking or whatever. Yeah, you can. I mean, there's certain prerequisites you have to, uh, courses you have to take in under, in, at least in a BRC, the school that I went to. Um, and I was fortunate enough to where I didn't have to take a lot of them because I had took AP classes in high school. And this was a huge relief um, because th they can be fairly serious um, and, uh, you know, like uh, calculus and you don't want to be taking calculus when you're in undergraduate school it's trying to study architecture and partying and things like that it's just so i think it's good to take it sooner for that reason i also think that even though we don't use that information directly in architecture um which would make a person think that it's totally pointless that we force students to take these classes but i actually think that it's a good it's good exercise for the mind anyway um because uh, when you get into weird calculus shit like calculating the surface air and volume of you know twisted donuts and things like this like you're never going to really use this but it's again forcing your brain to try and do extreme or fairly heavy problem solving with a certain system within a certain system that system is not what we use in architecture but it's still forcing your brain to look at all the different pieces in the puzzle and rearrange things to make it work out so i feel like it's it's just good exercise and you have to do it anyway so i, I would take those if you can but none of that means you will be a good architect at all right they're different oh yeah i mean that, that that's just to like check stuff on your list in school but that's it it's not so what classes would you recommend a high school student to take to uh help their um their design skills well i don't really know what type of classes are mandatory or optional in high school in the u.s but I would say maybe don't worry about like, you know, computer drafting, 3D modeling yet mm. before you go to school, because you, especially if you are into video games and all that kind of stuff, you might get really into it. And I think it might be detrimental f for you at the beginning of architecture school. That's my personal take on it. Um, I personally did a, uh, uh, bazaar one year of, of bazaar technique oh. and where i basically got to explore and try all kinds of you know creative making techniques right sculpture ceramic drawing painting live models and all photography like all kinds of stuff and i think actually they give me a, a heads up mm -hmm. you know uh, when i got in school because i already knew how to use those tools for my architecture projects computer you know like that's that's your generation you're gonna learn that stuff really quickly you have so many years to be very good at it and the programs are going to change so i wouldn't really worry about that but using tools that are more particular to yourself and more unique to you and you know might differentiate you from your your classmates mm. i think is is more interesting mm. um yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I think the greatest challenge that teachers have when they're uh, running a first year studio, so kids, kids that are right out of high school, let's say, is trying to get their minds to be much more open, right? Because they come to the table, they come to the first day of class with all these preconceptions about what architecture and buildings and what they need to know. and. I don't know why, I don't know who's told them that this is what architecture is or what buildings are and yada, 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 but this is what they always come to the table with. And it's like the challenge of the teacher, really, like 99.9% .9 of the time for the first one or two years of school is just trying to get the student to break loose of these ideas they have. And that's where taking CAD classes, computer-aided drawing classes, or structure classes, or um, Revit classes, uh, 3D modeling program um, classes in high school is, in my view, very, very, very dangerous, right? Um, because it's, it's, it's a question of, I think you can separate the tools from the creative thinking, right? And when you become advanced enough at the tools, 
they are what you use to express your creative thinking. However, it seems like in high school, when people start with those tools, as in learning computer-aided drafting and 3D modeling, their creativity just gets capped and that never really gets developed and they're constrained to what they think architecture is and they're constrained to their knowledge of the program and so it's a weird balance of 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 becoming a master at these tools but also taking courses and studying things where you're, you're just much more free and i think that I, and and i would yeah exactly and i would take like you know the few years he has before getting into college to really kind of just warm up you know, you're not starting working on architecture yet. You're just kind of warming up, trying things, trying a bunch of stuff out. You know, like, for example, I never, I, I learned Revit, Archicad, uh, SketchUp, AutoCAD in school. And oftentimes schools have, you know, classes like twice a week, you're going to have a Rhino class and yeah. stuff like that. So it's going to be part of the curriculum already. You don't yeah. need to get ahead of that. But for me, for example, I learned Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign the year before getting into arch architecture school. And I I had a very crappy phot uh, Photoshop class the first year that was awful. It was really not that helpful, but I already knew how the program was working, mm -hmm. you know? And this is, again, was more of a creative program than like an, an architecture design program. Well, the, also those programs are one step removed from buildings exactly. or 3D modeling exactly. or architecture. Doing photography too, you yeah. start, you, it's actually a very good exercise because you start, you know, framing things, being more attentive to details, color, lights, shadows, and those are sensibilities that you're going to need throughout your five years of architecture school. Same with drawing, you know, like just take a notebook and a pen and go sit in front of a building and try to draw the facade like once a week, you know, I think that's more interesting than trying to run SketchUp for mm. two years before going to school. No, I, I think it makes sense to take classes and to try to learn things that are tangential or maybe parallel to architecture, like somewhat related, but they're not architecture um, because those skills are 100% transferable and those also free you to, to, to again, pre, uh, be creative in those fields without having this burden of creating architecture. That's the biggest problem is that students come to, again, the, uh, the first day of class and they, they want to make architecture. I'm like, you don't even know what architecture is. How are you going to make architecture? I'm going to make a building. Okay, well, that's not architecture. I must have a door. It must be this tall. Okay, this is all completely wrong. Stop, stop, stop. Um, and I don't trust any of the high school programs, frankly, to to teach architecture uh, through a CAD class or 3D modeling class. So I think it makes much more sense to take photography, sculpture, uh, painting, fucking interpretive dance, uh, music, all these other creative fields, because you will find things that are directly related to design in architecture where uh, the buildings is the medium, right? But you won't again be limited to what you're think to your own thinking, and I think it's it's a really good thing. It's something that I regret. I wish that, well, they didn't really offer at my school because my school sucked. But I wish that in high school, or even in undergrad, I had taken all the classes I just mentioned. I took some of them, but I, you know, take all those classes because I think it would have allowed me the freedom to do more interesting and wild wild things and explore ideas but not be confined to the pressures of doing an architecture project uh namely for me like doing a really good architecture project it's, it's like it was a lot of pressure so i i think it's it's uh, that's the best way to go for sure and um but this is all very different from taking a cad course right it's very easy to say okay architects they use uh, AutoCAD. So I'm going to learn AutoCAD in high school. Therefore, when I get to college, I will have the skill set and I will be more advanced than everyone else. Um, one, like as same for you, uh, you learned all the programs in college very easily. That's what happens with everyone. You will learn these programs in college on your own within the first two weeks of using it because you're going to use it so much that it, you're going to learn it. Not and a you're problem. actually going to master them when you start working. So. Yeah. yeah, and so so I don't buy that you need to to take these classes to become more prepared. It, it won't matter over the course of five years. By year two, everything evens out, and what and how successful people are in their technical knowledge just comes down to how hardworking they are. So don't worry about it. The second thing with the second reason why that idea is flawed is that uh, going back to the uh, to the to the um, notion that it limits your creative thinking. And a lot of the students I see, see and saw, saw and see come in as first years, and they have this background in these these technical skills. 
they really, really struggle. They have some of the worst projects in the studio very often because they're trapped to that mindset. Um, so I, I don't believe in having to take those courses and, and, and I don't think they're going to help you really at all. The one thing I, I um, when and also actually, if you take those classes before going to architecture school, in some way you can build almost a mini portfolio mm. to have ready to apply to the school you want to get into. If they take what? If you take those, um, you know, arti more artistic yeah. Uh, yeah. courses, yeah. because no nobody's going to care to see that you draw a super crappy floor plan on CAD. Like, that's not going to get you into any school, no. right? They want to know who you are, what's in your guts, what you're able to do, like, you know. And I think and I, that's, that was what I did, basically. I took a year off, learned all those techniques and work on building a portfolio this way and then applied. The only thing I wish I did uh, in retrospective is um, I wish I, I traveled more as a teenager. Yeah. And even if I traveled a little with my parents around Europe, I wish I looked at things already thinking that I would be an architect in a way. Hmm. Um, you know, so I feel like if you're 15 and you already know you want to be an architect, start when you go places, start being attentive and, and look at things with a critical eye, pay attention to, you know, people, places, materials, like all of those things, because really that that shows you all the possibilities in the world, right? But there's a difference. But see, it's funny when you said travel and, and see things, one is again going to assume that you're saying you should travel and see architecture, but architecture is not any, wasn't on your list of things to observe. And I think this highlights again this idea that to prepare for undergraduate architecture school that you have to study buildings and architecture, which is, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Oh, no, thing, I'm, but... I mean, I wish, you know, I traveled outside of Europe, for example. Right. Like, you know, it was a, a, a revelation to me when I came to the US, only knowing Europe before, or when I went to China, you know, like you see cultures and behaviors and people and and things really really differently from what you're accustomed to yeah 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 but the thing all the things all the stuff you just listed is not buildings you didn't say oh, go yeah, study yeah. buildings right and i'm trying this is what i'm saying uh, you can study buildings i'm not against that um, at all but it's equally if maybe if not more important to when you are traveling or if you have the potential to see other things is to be open to the cultures of places, the people, and of course, how they relate to what we call the built environment, which is anything physically uh, constructed by by my people, right? And that, but that's different from saying, go and get a book on architecture and study all the architecture and buildings. Um, like you don't need to do that because you're gonna do that in school anyway. And again, I think it's more important to just um, broaden your mind. I mean, when you were talking about the these high school students preparing a portfolio for for undergrad which a lot of schools require which i think makes sense but is also kind of like oh it's challenging it's, it's because silly, right like i'll have to post an image of the portfolio i made it was it was like basically you know logos i made when i was eight years old and uh, arts and crafts i did when i was a kid like because i had nothing else i didn't go to art school um but anyway so in terms of the 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 portfolio for getting into getting into architecture school, which is a reflection of what you should be studying uh, before again college. Uh, schools, do, uh, colleges, they don't care about your technical skills really. They care about again, like you said, as who you are as a person and how you can think and how creative you are. I think generally, uh, people outside of the profession they think architecture is much more technical. Um, let's say, and, and mathematic and engineering based uh, than, than it actually is, than what schools prioritize. Schools prior, prioritize and care about finding the next person who's going to reinvent everything and, to, and to like change the world and yada, yada, yada. And uh, to that end, they really don't care if you know AutoCAD. One, again, because you're going to learn it and it's not interesting at all. But if you can make beautiful sculptures, this is something that's much more promising, right? There's actual potential there. So I think, I think, um, no, I don't think anything else. <laughs> well, and if you can travel to, you know, uh, countries that are really far away and very different, well, you know, just try and surround yourself with people who are from different countries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So there is another post on Archonnect with uh, a kind of a similar scenario. I think it's an architect, uh, uh, high school. a high school student who's looking into becoming an architect potentially. And the post goes, hello, I am a high school student and I figured I should start making a serious look at career to pursue. I have always loved building and design. This started from Legos as a kid to building houses in Minecraft. I really have to look what Minecraft is. Mm. Um, to now taking an architectural design class in which we're designing homes in CAD in high school. But I am unsure if uh, going into architecture is right for me, or even more so if architecture school is right for me. I have done some research and it seems like many schools do not emphasize the building of actual structures and that it is more of an art school and the things made often do not even reflect buildings. I'm not saying I'm not saying these things are bad and in fact I would say that they help with creativity mm. but it is not what I would enjoy. That being said, I do enjoy coming up with creative designs, just mostly on buildings. I don't want to be copying an architect's plan onto CAD software either. Though I really do like CAD, I have looked into careers related to architecture as well, such as structural engineering, structural engineering but I'm unsure uh, if that is what fits me, as they do not handle the design of the structure most of the time, from what I understand. Uh, the, are there other careers related to architecture I should know about? Um, are there accredited school that deals mostly with design of buildings? Thanks. Yeah, so I think the, the line where he says, I don't want to be copying art and architect's plans into CAD, but I do really like CAD is interesting because I think the architect is, is a weird person because they are both the artist and the a more technical person in that you do have to have, I think, you should take joy and doing technical documents and being very specific and detailed and having uh, pieces of this building puzzle fit together nicely. I think that's an important trait of an architect. At the same time, you also need to be the complete weirdo who's going to question everything. So being able to straddle the line that separates those, those two is the greatest challenge for anyone and is the greatest challenge for architects. And um, I think his statement, though, is again loaded with the assumption that he's he's a, he's already assumed what buildings are, and, and what architecture is, and what architecture school is. Right. So I think the the first thing, I think you go to architecture school to find out what architectural ac architecture actually is, and what a building is, and the answer to what a building is, basically a question. What is a building? That's the question you were faced with throughout your entire time in school and probably your entire career, right? And then what is architecture? And you'll find that there's not one answer. Uh, there's not one, there's not a consensus, right? So it's, it really depends on, on how comfortable you are with, again, being lost in questions and not being able to have stable ground underneath you. Like the structural engineer, has something to rely on. He knows it has to stand up. That's his mission is to make sure it stands up in, a, in an efficient way, let's say that's easily constructible. But the question of what is a house? What should the house look like? Who says a house should have X numbers of rooms? And how does it reflect culture and society? Well, these are big fucking questions. And these are not the same thing as what an engineer does. So if you think that you are interested in these larger questions and that you have the, the mindset that is uh, able to tackle them or try to tackle them, then architecture is for you. Yeah, and I, I think what's uh, interesting and kind of sad at the same time is that, you know, he's saying in his post that, oh, so it seems like structural engineer don't decide on like what the structure looks like and it's like uh, well it's not really true and again it's a teamwork it's not you know you do this i do that and we kind of glue it together no um, that's true but I, but I think he is correct that in in terms of how the the team members team members work with each other the architect is the orchestrator the composer and he decides they decide you know what it's going to be and the engineer helps them figure it out and there's a back and forth but at the end of the day the architect is the one who makes the design decision right yes and that's all yeah. he's saying yeah yeah, yeah 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 but if you have a great uh, structural engineer who's like super smart and a great architect you know like the power of the two can create a, a structure that maybe the structural engineer would come up with 
Um, so, so you know, it, it, there is no black and white. It's kind of a, a gray and, and case by case uh, thing. And no, there is no really uh, school besides architecture that is dealing with the design of buildings. Um, I mean, there are, there are, but I just would recommend going to them. And they tend to tend to be technical colleges or city colleges. Yeah, but you're an, you're, you're an engineer. Um, like who else besides an architect would design buildings? Oh, 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 that's are not architecture schools. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Like I don't think so. If you are interested in both the technical aspect of a building and the design aspect of a building, then it is architecture school you have to right. go to, right? right? If you're only interested in the technical part, then you know you can become some kind of engineer, like I don't know, even a facade engineer, yeah. structural engineer, right? But anything that relates to design creativity. Well, they have they, again. They have like technical colleges or more vo vocational schools, and a lot of times they are city colleges, where um, what they teach is much more closer to as he's this author's describing as, as buildings, and it's less about conceptual questioning and more about how to use Revit, how to produce a house that is a typical house that we see. What are the proper dimensions for people to fit in a house, and yada 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 yada. So they exist. I'm like totally against them, though. I think it's it's. But you But if you go to those places, you're already limiting yourself to those possibilities, right? And I feel like if you don't know what possibilities are out there, why would you limit yourself? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. It's my um, so I think you can go to those places and get the skills, and then go work for an office or whatever, and you could potentially do decent buildings, decent uh, decent buildings, buildings that work and function and stand up and are you know, weatherproofed and are comfortable to be in and have good daylight. Um, but any serious architecture school, that's not enough. That's like a tiny portion of the, of the whole, um, the whole pie. Right. And the majority of the architect architecture school is dedicated toward, again, questioning what is even a building in this day and age, how should buildings evolve and, and much larger things that start to get into cultural issues, um, that are much greater than technical things of how to use Revit, you know. Uh, it seems like this kid, you know, did his uh, homework about, you know, maybe what comes out of architecture school in terms of project and production. But maybe the next step would be to, I don't know, do an internship in an architecture firm and see I'm how not, things work. You know? I'm, not, I'm not against that. We've talked about that before, but I think it's... No, but if he wants to understand, you know, the different actors and like, those things you can do as an architect. It's a, it's a really, really broad profession. Because right now he's, he's, he's understanding architectural school as being the profession, right? As kind of producing stuff that doesn't really look like a building. Right. But again, you need to see both sides. You need to see the professional world and the school of right. architecture to understand that there is room for everybody to be happy in architecture. Basically. And the interesting thing is that the the dropout rate from architecture schools is uh, historically very high. Like one in three will graduate is a number that you hear pretty often. And it was the case at the schools I've been around. So you start with a class of 300, graduate with a class of 100, or the original class 100 are there to get transfer students or whatever. So in a way, I think that's really good because it, it tells you that many people come into the education with an idea of what it's going to be about, and they realize that this is not for me. This is like way too, too much work, too stressful, or too whatever, right? So uh, I, again, I think if you're remotely interested in it, just do it and then see how it goes. Because the school and the curriculum will weed you out pretty quickly enough. So it's not, in other words, I mean, if you go through all five years of architecture school um, and then you, you graduate and you're like, wow, it's a total waste of time. I hated all of it. I don't think that's going to, that's not very likely to happen. You're very likely to be washed out earlier on is my point. Like architecture school tends to be very transparent in, in what it's about from year from day one, right? And if you don't like year one or year two, uh, good chance you're not going to care for year three, four, and five. Also, like you know what I mean? Like it's it's um it's pretty transparent in that way. Um, <clears throat> but so then after you after you finish school and you, and you go to practice, of course there is a lot of griping about low pay and poor job security and i think all of this is highlighting 
the bigger struggle of that the profession of architecture as a whole is really struggling to to make more money to become respected and to get better projects and things like this and i think for a lot of people on this thread who are very unhappy very unhappy it's kind of like well the profession sucks so don't bother uh, well that's one attitude to have and it's totally understandable we can't all be the ones to change the world and change existing professions however i think a more productive and hopeful way to look at it is well what can i do to fix the profession um, and maybe that's too big of a big of a question for a high school student but i'm kind of on the mentality well, that yeah yeah and the thing is that every profession has its own problem right it's not like there is like one profession when you just gonna make a ton of money not do much and get all the benefits and like everybody's happy every every profession has things that need to be improved you know and that's how if you're and, and that shouldn't be the reason why you you turn around and look for something else um yeah i mean one easy way to to one easy argument is to say, well, you can do something, you can do, you can have a career and, and spend the, the majority of your life, your waking life, doing something because it gives you good health insurance, uh, other good benefits, gives you vacation, like, you know, things like this, gives you good money, job security, or you can say, I want to do what I'm really passionate about and fuck everything else, right? These are kind of two mindsets and ideally you kind of, you can do both at the same time. It's just that the profession of architecture doesn't really allow you to do both at the same time. So you get a lot of people who are very passionate about um, architecture, but hate the profession. Or they, they well, they get a lot of those people, you know what I mean? And um, again, I, I think that it's, it's true, but I feel like there's a way to, to solve it. You know, and I think it's it's kind of doing the community a disservice to dissuade people from going and studying architecture simply because the professional life as it is currently is not what it should be. Well, that's definitely not going to fix anything. Well, and I think, you know, no one can tell anyone you can't or you shouldn't do this. You know, I think I think it, it's more fair to present what things are and that people decide by themselves what they want to be doing. I wish I knew that architects actually have a harder time making as much money as people think mm -hmm. you know because it's like oh, i'm gonna become an architect so i could you know work at a desk and not like do physical work and like make good money and it's it takes a little longer to get there probably mm -hmm. and then you know more opportunities but it's the pro i mean but they also, but you know, like you were saying, it depends what is most important for you in life. Right. Is it to have a nine to six job and go home and do whatever and just have a job to make money, you know, buy groceries, and then what really matters is everything else but that? Is it what matters more than nine hours you're spending at a place every day? And what the reason why you're getting out of bed every morning? is the reason like the amount of money you want to make is the reason the impact of what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis on the planet you know like mm. like what are you most interested in what is the most important thing to you yeah and if you're a person who wants all of that which is a great mentality to have then i would say to go study architecture and then deal with these issues after you graduate um because again i think you can can pivot to a different profession fairly easily. And also, uh, it, it really comes down to, I think, a personality thing and a lifetime of choices. So if you take one person who is, uh, you know, very critically minded, creative, and, and wants to succeed in all of these ways, and they're smart about how they conduct their personal life and the professional life, right? And they think long-term goals and things like this, um, that's, so that's one person. Then you take another person who's really passionate about architecture but doesn't think about all this other stuff. Then you give them each 15 years of living in the profession. They're going to end up in different places, right? So it's kind of like a lot of the people who are really unhappy with where they are, um, I totally get it. And, it, and the cards are 110% stacked against you. But maybe over the last 15 years, you should have done something differently. Yeah, right? and that's why, you know, I kind of always, um, you know, as much as I love complaining and rambling about things as, you know, a French uh, native, 
<laughs> I, oh, 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 oh. Well, you know, that's kind of what we do, right? <laughs> um, and and there is truth to that, but you can always just blame the the profession of architecture. You know, you kind of have to like introspect yourself a little bit and like look at what you could have done differently or what you could do differently and, and what is really wrong in this situation. You know, like we talked about this before in, in, in other episodes and I think because, it applies, because, right? because for sure there are really successful architects and there's like the one percent of the star architects like foster who i don't is foster considered a star architect well foster level people right prisker prize and whatever whatever and there's a whole mass of people that aren't making a lot of money but there are also those somewhere between the two who are making legit money and they're happy and wealthy and they have a practice and it's not and they are more rare than perhaps um in other professions and maybe it was much more difficult for them than if they were to be in another field but it's doable and these people exist so the question is what did they do uh that i did not do so that i end up where i am now uh griping on an Arconnect form complaining that i don't make enough money and it was really difficult versus what they did they must have done something and you could be the really unlucky person for sure who uh, you know, lost all their family, lost a house, and an asteroid hit you in the head, and, and whatever. Like he, th that could happen to you. But other than that, like, do you think the guy who's making millions of dollars a year and has his own firm, but no one knows about him, but he would be considered successful, is going on Arcanex and complaining about how difficult the profession is? No, he's spending his time trying to solve the issues. And that's why I think it's kind of unfair, you know, to post those kind of response to a kid who is trying to make a decision because it's like yeah but this is all based on uh, you specifically and how you approach it you're actually not answering his question especially if especially if you're talking about someone who has 10 to 15 years of experience okay well you where you are now is based on 10 years of life that's a lot of decision making that happened so for sure at some point you made some mistakes Right, very likely. Again, unless you're that one person who was <laughs> hit by an asteroid or whatever the cows are describing. Well, and also the, the interesting response though, you know, would be nice to see is okay for all of the architect who answer to that post. You know, if they had a chance to go back and do things differently, you know, what right. what could they recommend for someone who is about to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Or what what did they do before they did architecture school? that work for them that might work for someone else you know like you can rumble but also you have to give a little bit of advice there and try to step back and see what you know yeah. what could help someone else yeah. i don't know i think uh one thing is for sure true is that being an architect and operating in this profession is a long-term commitment and that's really difficult uh for a 15 year old to comprehend or to know to, it's not, it's not, like a, it's not a signed contract. It's not like once you sign this agreement and go to architecture school, you're going to do this for the rest of your life. But if you want to be successful in it, it is a long-term thing. And, and that stems for many reasons. And one of them is the fact that buildings take a long time to build compared to other, other, other professions. And, and, um, and it takes, um, and it takes a long time to learn how to make a building. Yeah. Yeah. So it takes a certain amount of like mental, a uh, uh, dedication, I think, and you and a person being steadfast and and having exhibiting the the sheer will to to undertake something like that. And I think that is difficult to do, maybe even especially now, considering how quickly everything happens. Um, so that's something I would be mindful of. But again, I don't even know if that's worth talking about to a fifteen year old, you know, like, yeah, go to school, see what happens, try it out. Um, the other benefit I would say about being an architect, uh, or we should say going through school and then practicing for a bit and has nothing to do with wealth, money, uh, wealth or security is that it, I think it trains you to look at the world in a very, very unique way. And it's an exciting way. And, uh, I think if you are a good designer, then once you go out and travel and see different things. I feel like the amount of gratitude you have for different people and different experiences uh, is just so much greater than someone who maybe didn't go through this kind of design school, right? I, I feel like me as a person has uh, 
I am much more open and interested in things and cultures, and I'm excited by the world around me always, even if it's the most mundane place, because of my because of the design education and, and my experience. And this is something that is uh, is very exciting to 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 think this way. It's also incredibly uh, frustrating because you see problems everywhere you go, <laughs> but it's. It's something. It's it's insights that you wouldn't, I think, have if maybe you did other, other studies. Yeah, uh, the other ne potential negative aspect of being an architect is that most likely, um, maybe a good chunk of your friends would be architects. <laughs> so just be ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and all you talk about every day would be architecture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's about it, right? The only other thought I had is that it's a really broad study, uh, field to study and profession. I mean, you, you get exposed to history, philosophies, uh, psych, uh, sociology, geography, obviously building buildings. You get exposed to a lot of different things. Like I said, there is so much room for everyone interested in architecture to find the right spot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not yeah. like I'm an accountant and all I'm going to do is taxes or, you know, accounting for a business. There is like a, a, a fan of possibilities. Yeah, and, and some of them don't even have to be outside of architecture. So let's say architecture to set designer. Well, that's a different profession, we could say. But even within architecture, we have people doing experimental art installations and they never do a building and they're considered an architect. It's debatable, but they're considered an architect. We have architects who obviously just do our academics or they just become critics or ones that do only towers or ones that do urban planning or ones that, I don't even do, do interior architecture. Like it's a really, even within the title of architecture, there's many different things. So um, I, I would be wary of, I, I would take any information coming from one person uh, with a grain of salt, right? Yep. Now it's chips time. <laughs> Thanks everyone for listening to this week's episode of the Midnight Charette. Uh, leave us a review in the podcast app if you can. This really helps us to keep us motivated, also to help us in the rankings and help uh, spread the word about this show and all that we uh, endeavor to do. Uh, we are also, aside from iTunes, we are on Spotify and YouTube on occasion. And we have our own website, which is midnightcharette.com, where we have all of our previous episodes. And on there, you can reach out to us and let us know if you have any topics that we should talk about or people we should interview. And lastly, we... Uh, really appreciate that you are listening to this and we hope it's uh, helpful and we hope it's interesting at the very least we hope it stirs uh, gets the mind working perhaps mm -hmm. or even just simply entertaining entertaining is a good one too and uh, it means a lot and we, we will keep pushing forward um, with the show so thank you and we will talk to you again next week bye